Hi, this is Charlie Hesse from Tropical Birding and welcome to this virtual bird tour of West Papua. West Papua was top of my bucket list destination. It was the place I wanted to go most in the world. Um, and after 10 years at Tropical Birding, I finally got the opportunity to go there last year. Um, and it really was the trip of a lifetime for me. In my view, it's got some of the best birds in the world. It has some of the toughest birding in the world. But there are a lot of photographic setups and blinds where you have the chance of seeing some birds of paradise display. Um, of the 42 species um, of birds of paradise in the world, we saw 19 on this trip. That's almost half of the um, birds of paradise in the world, so that's pretty amazing. It's an incredible place, so uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, let's start with a map of the region. You can see the island of New Guinea here is located above Australia. They're separated by a shallow sea which was connected um, very recent times, as recent as about 8,000 years. So there's, a, uh, there's some overlap in bird species. You can see that the island of New Guinea um, has the shape of a bird. Um, and on the, the top left there, you can see this is called the, the bird's head. Uh, it's named so by the the Dutch who called it Fokkelkop. So you'll um, you'll notice a lot of the endemic birds here are named Fokkelkop. Okay, we're gonna make a start. We start in the city of Sorong, which is uh, the capital of the province. And our first birding location will be at the Sorong mangroves. Um, although um, I said the Birding is very tough here. There's uh, a little bit of easier birding here at the mangroves to start. Um, some of the birds we might see at the mangroves um, are things like uh, sacred kingfisher, um, barred rail, brown-backed honey eater is um, a very common member of uh, the honey eater family, which is a very typical Australasian family. And there's an awful lot of fruit doves in uh, on, on New Guinea um, and one common one here in the mangroves is called the orange fronted fruit dove. And we may also see some of these beautiful uh, rainbow bee eaters. If we just go back to the map for a minute, next we're going to the next morning, we are going to go up to um, a nice forest patch um, called Maron Kata. Some birds we might see here um, include the huge Blythe's hornbill yellow-faced miner. We may see uh, the yellow-billed kingfisher, quite a common bird by voice, but um, sometimes very difficult to see. It took us quite a while to find this one, but we, um, we finally got great scope views of one doing its call. This is the king bird of paradise. It's the smallest bird of paradise, beautifully colored, um, bright red and white, and it has these wires at the end of its tail with these um, emerald green discs which it uses um, in its display. It's not an easy bird to find, we did have to look quite hard for it um, and also it's not an easy bird to observe because it's up um, in the sort of mid-story tangles. So, But we all ended up with very nice scope views in the end. Another big target here is a red-breasted paradise kingfisher. Um, really beautiful bird. This was also a really tough bird to find, but we really persevered. We spent quite a while looking for it, and finally we ended up with really nice views. Um, okay, next we're going to take a ferry um, from Sorong across to the big island of Waijeo. Waijeo is quite a, a large forested island and we're just going to be visiting this southern part here. On the crossing we may see some um, some seabirds like these lesser frigate birds. And when we arrive we'll be picked up by some drivers in uh, 4x4 vehicles um, and then we'll um, bird our way towards our accommodation. Uh, we stopped at a really nice place last time where we had a lot of um, uh, uh, parrots flying over and we saw our first palm cockatoos, really huge bird. Um, we have the beautiful brightly colored Eclectus parrot. This is a male here with this really bright green color. The females are red and blue. And also the beautiful uh, black-capped lorry. 
this is our destination. We stay at a, a very nice dive lodge on the coast. Um, it's really one of the nicest places we stay. Um, there's some beautiful uh, wood cabins um, just off the beach. Um, and you get this lovely fresh um, sea breeze. There's often a Papuan frogmouth in the gardens and the staff um, usually know just where to find it. And um, we sometimes go out at night for some night birding and we can also find the uh, marbled frogmouth. We don't usually see too many mammals, but um, this is one that we have a good chance of seeing. It's called a YJO couscous. A couscous is a marsupial. It's like a cross between a possum and a, and a Dalmatian. It's got these huge blotches on it, but they're uh, really a uh, cool animal. Okay, the next morning we're gonna go up a uh, forest road and we're gonna look for some really spectacular birds. This is the Wilson's Bird of Paradise, one of the biggest targets of the tour, only found on YJO Island. This was famously the favorite bird of Sir David Attenborough, um, and you can see why. It's just got all these bright primary colors, blue, red, and yellow, uh, with these really distinctive curly tail feathers that actually reflect the light, and it uses these dur during its um, uh, display. You can see the yellow here on the back of the neck. And the female is much more drably colored, but has the same kind of uh, weird bold blue head and they, they almost don't look like a bird they look like some sort of weird alien we arrived early in the morning at the blind um, and we had a male calling very loudly um, from a perch i guess trying to call in a female every time it called it would sort of ruffle its feathers um, but yeah wonderful um, atmospheric scene and then it moved down onto its display uh, ground uh, which keeps impeccably clean and started tossing off leaves that had fallen there um, and then we finally saw some very nice displaying uh, behavior of the pair. Next, we're gonna climb up a very steep hill. Luckily, it has a handrail. Um, and we're gonna go and look for um, this bird, the red bird of paradise. And um, there's also a display site there. Um, this is up in the trees this time. So we, get, we go to the top of a hill and wait for these birds to come in. We didn't see any displaying, but we did get very good views of a couple of males. You don't see a display of every species of bird of paradise, but you certainly have chances for some, and every one you see is a real privilege. The next target of the tour is a western crowned pigeon. These are absolutely enormous birds. How they've managed to survive in places with such um, uh, hunting pressure is, is pretty amazing. Our local guides know just where to find these and they took us along a trail where we found one walking along. It flew up into the trees and then it froze there and we got really good um, scope views of this amazing bird. Got a little bit of video footage of it as well, but just totally bizarre, this kind of uh, amazing crest. I mean, a really unique bird. It's just wonderful to see. This was really another one of my big targets and a big, um, one of the top birds of the tour. Okay, next from the dive resort, we're gonna take a boat. I'm just gonna show you on the map again from YJO. We're gonna take a boat ride to the small island of Merpati. Um, here we're gonna look for um, a set of species that are known as super tramps. These are birds that are only found on these small islands and not on any of the larger islands, even though these small islands are very uh, widely distributed. It's a very strange phenomenon that was coined. The term was first coined by Jared Diamond in 1974. Um, but yeah, some really uh, nice additions to the trip. Um, it's a really beautiful paradise island with this white sand and these crystal clear um, turquoise waters. Um, we've got a wet landing. We take our shoes off and uh, jump in the water. Um, and then we have a little walk around the outside of the island uh, looking for this beautiful bird. It's called the beach kingfisher, really um, uh, beautiful bird. Next, we're gonna walk around inside the forest. It's pretty tangly, it's not easy walking, um, but we should find most of our target species quite easily. 
This is called the Spice Imperial Pigeon. It has this very uh, distinctive uh, knob on its bill. Uh, another member of the honey eater family is called the olive honey eater, another one of these super tramp species. The Moluccan starling. And another one is the Arafura fantail. Very nice to pick up some of these species. From Merpati, we go back to Waijeo and take a ferry back across to Sorong. And then from Sorong, we take a short flight across the, um, the Focal Cop um, Peninsula to the town of Manokwari. Um, from here, we drive up into the Arthak Mountains and we stay in a little village called Mingre. We use Mingre as a base for exploring the Arthak Mountains. The Arthak Mountains are stunningly beautiful. Real pristine forest at a variety of um, elevations and we're going to look for uh, some of our most wanted birds of the trip. Our ground agent has formed a uh, a good relationship with the, the people from Mingra village um, and they benefit directly from um, tourists coming to see the birds of paradise. The largest building in the village has been um, turned into an eco lodge. It's just got four simple rooms um, and some uh, just some simple garden furniture um, but they do a very good job. They really do their best to make us feel comfortable and the food there is very good. Uh, Indonesian style food. I'm a vegetarian um, and this is one of my favorite dishes. This is it's called gado gado. It's got tofu and tempeh and uh, vegetables, boiled eggs and some little crispy things covered in a peanut sauce, but really delicious. Okay, our first um, target we're going to go and look for um, is one of the bowerbirds. The bowerbirds create these amazing structures um, and then they sort of adorn the front of them with colorful things. Originally, they would have just used uh, seeds and flowers and things like that, but now they'll uh, they collect uh, certain colored trash to um, decorate. You can see the local guide here is rearranging some of the um, bits of plastic. So the bird flies back in and um, puts it back how it wants it. This is the focal cop bowerbird, um, our target. And you can see here it's collected some, um, some flowers, but also little bits of plastic uh, bottle tops. I've um, got a bit of um, footage here, um, not a really beautiful bird, but just watching its behavior was just was absolutely amazing. Um, you can see it hopping around its, its court here. It's got a little branch that it hop, hops up onto and then looks down to check the arrangement of, um, of decorations and then it hops down. Um, this is a bottle that the local guide moved and you can see it putting it back into place there. <laughs> Um, but it was just so fun to watch. You see it hopping up again and taking another look. Um, you know these um, plastic tarpaulins, they, so when they get old they sort of crack and it's collected some of those. Um, it's got a, um, different colors on each side and it sort of flips it over to get the maximum effect of this, uh, this blue color. Um, you can see it hopping up there and turning other little pieces over. It was just so entertaining to watch. Um, next, we're going to go into some uh, blinds. This is these have been set up by the local community. Um, they're just very simple structures with uh, with rattan palms. And from these, we normally spend about two or three hours inside these, um, and we uh, we wait for some of our target birds to come in. This is the Western Parotia. Uh, one of our big targets here. You may have seen this on some wildlife documentaries. It does a sort of ballerina type dance and then sort of wags its head around. Um, we had to separate into some separate blinds here. Um, we had um, two blinds with the clients in um, and then one small blind with, uh, with um, Ken, the guide and myself. And the clients got the full display of this bird, whereas Ken and I only had good views of uh, the bird coming down to check out its court. This is a female here. She's much more drably colored, but always when the female arrives is when you get to see the display. 
Um, they've started um, putting out food for these birds as well, so you get really nice views of the birds coming to feed. There's a, a large tree called a pandanus that has these fruiting bodies, um, and they they buy these in a local market and bring them in for the birds to feed on. Um, you can see one male here feeding on these pandanus fruits, but you see this light, long sort of antenna-like projections coming out the back of its head. Um, yeah, really incredible bird. Uh, next, we're going to go and look for the magnificent bird of paradise, again in a um, photographic blind. Um, this was never really high on my list of things to see until I actually saw this display. It absolutely blew my mind. Um, it has this sort of scruffy mane of feathers on the back of its neck, but underneath that it's got this bright yellow ruff which it sort of um, erects during its display and it's got these very uh, these tail wires which curve around and just at the right angle they sort of reflect light but it we, we got a really amazing view of the display of this bird and this also was being fed on these pandanus fruits i've got some video footage here you can see um, the male feeding on some of these um, pandanus fruits again And then it moved down onto one of its display perches and you can see the female um, is coming in here as well. He's got this sort of bottle green um, chest patch which is sort of throbs like a sort of beating heart and you can see it's flicking its, um, its tail there um, and it catching the light in certain angles. Um, it often likes to display on a vertical perch like this um, and it's calling and trying to persuade the female to come down um, and then here you can see the female fin finally came and he's still throbbing his, his throat patch, pouch there. I didn't get any video of the final part of the display but I did get a nice photo. Um, you can see here he um, erects this sort of um, hidden uh, bright yellow headdress um, and then he sort of um, puffs out his sort of chest shield and then he starts wagging his uh, his little um, curly tail feathers around but um it was just absolutely amazing to see um totally mind-blowing and a real a real privilege while we were waiting for the bird we also had this very special bird here the arfak catbird which came in to feed on some fruits that had fallen to the ground um the catbirds are an australasian family um and this huge one uh, just came in for a few seconds and then flew away and that was the only time that we saw it on the whole trip this next bird um, was called the superb bird of paradise it's now called the focal cop lofarina which is the scientific name this was probably my most wanted bird in the world um, you may have seen some footage of this on um, wildlife documentaries it's got this beautiful blue breast shield and then it's got these feathers which it sort of lifts in it's almost like a little satellite dish um, over its head and then it sort of jumps up and down but um just another kind of really alien like um bird display and um, got some footage of this bird and um, so it flew in um onto its display log to begin with um, and then it starts doing these really piercing um uh, shrieking calls um, and here it hops up on top and you can see these really long feathers which uh, in the full display it raises above its head we didn't see that unfortunately but just to see this the bird this well was um, was a real privilege and you can see it calling again here doing a shrieking call and you can see this very kind of uh, yellow green interior to the mouth um, but just just amazing just an absolutely amazing bird really one of the highlights of the trip really one of the birds of the trip for me some of the other birds of paradise are not quite so spectacular this is called the long-tailed parody gala and the local guides had a nest staked out so we went along to take a look at this okay that's the easy birding finished and now we delve into the forest um, to see what else we can find um, as I said before, it's extremely challenging birding, but with um, some effort and perseverance, you can really find some nice birds. 
This was an nice bird that we saw, um, the rufous-throated bronze cuckoo. You can see things like Papuan tree creeper, another Australasian family. Um, this is a bird that was a real taxonomic enigma. It's called the mottled um, berry hunter, and it's an endemic um, New Guinean family. Um, Ken did a very good job in locating a nest of this bird. Um, another bird we saw was a black-breasted boatbill, a sort of um, um, flycatcher-like birds with this very wide bill. Another member of the honey eater family called the Arfak honey eater. And this was a really tough bird to find. It's called a Papuan log runner. Um, it almost acts like a little miniature chicken on the uh, on the forest ground. Uh, I saw one quite nicely um, just by hearing the, the leaves rustling and I stood very still. And then one of these birds sort of came into view. But uh, yeah, really tough bird to find. There's another family called Owlet Nightjars. Um, there's several species here. Uh, the locals from the village uh, sometimes have day roosts staked out. This is called the um, Mountain Owlet Nightjar and the Feline Owlet Nightjar with these very long uh, cat-like whiskers. We were also taken down a very steep trail to look for this very localized um, focal cop Owl at night jar. I took some I took some video of it but it really didn't move very much but you can see all these little ants crawling around and I think a lizard also walks by and this thing just stays completely still in its little hole um, yeah but really special bird very rare bird we come out of the forest and we're gonna take a rather long drive um, to the village of Angie um, and we're gonna look for a very localized bird called the gray banded Munia. These were actually fairly easy to find once we got there and um, it took uh, two or three hours to drive all the way there. Some of the road was in very bad shape um, but yeah we got to see this very special bird and on the way back we also saw the Papuan grass bird. Okay from Mingre we're going to go back down to Manokwari and from there we're going to fly um, across to Sentani um, on the northern side of uh, of West Papua. It's quite close to the border with um, with Papua New Guinea. And from there we're going to go to a um, small village called Nimbo Krang uh, where we're going to stay at a homestay which is just on the edge of some very nice lowland rainforest. The homestay is owned by a um, Papuan man who's made a very nice um, birding lodge there and um, he's even built a canopy tower with this beautiful view across the forest. Um, it's a wonderful place to look for canopy birds. Um, we've got really nice views of some raptors there, like this long-tailed honey buzzard, and this very unusual um, bright white um, color morph of variable goshawk. How this has come into being, I'm not quite sure. I had a theory that maybe it's, uh, it's mimicking a um, sulfur-crested cockatoo. Yeah, very unusual bird. Here we see a nice size comparison between this moustached tree swift and this Papuan hanging parrot. And we see some uh, large imperial pigeons like these Pinnons imperial pigeons. Um, and a very unusual bird called the lowland Peltops. It's actually in the butcher bird family, very unusual bird. Sometimes you see birds very close to the canopy platform. We have this, um, this black sunbird coming very close. Um, and here's a member of the cuckoo shrike family called the gray-headed cicada bird. Next, we're gonna go down into the forest and walk some trails. Um, and this is really some of the most challenging birding of the whole trip. With lots of effort, we, we should see some good birds um, like this um, okra collared monarch, it's often found in mixed species flocks. Um, this is a really tough bird, the Papuan pitter. Um, I'm sure some of you may have looked for pitters before, but really tough bird to find. We go up to um, another viewpoint um, and from there we use a scope to scan across. Uh, last time we had very nice views of some fruit doves including this orange bellied fruit dove. Um, this is the rufous bellied kookaburra and um, actually one of the easier members of the kingfisher family to see. And we also got great views of more palm cockatoos with a very 
um, outlandish bushy crests but really impressive birds these are also found in the very northern part of Australia and um, we're also going to look for some new birds of paradise this is the lesser bird of paradise this displays um, up in very leafy trees not always easy um, to see them we didn't see the display of this but we had them uh, calling up there we got really wonderful views Um, we were taken on a very tough hike to go and look for this bird. This is a magnificent rifle bird. We got up, we had to hike up in the dawn on a very muddy trail. Um, but we got to the blind and we got really nice views of this bird. Um, and again, you can see that very kind of lime green or yellow green um, inside of the mouth. Really uh, amazing bird. This is the 12 wild bird of paradise, another big target on the tour. Um, it's got these totally unique wires coming from its tail. Um, again, we hiked in in the dark on a muddy trail and we got there early enough to get in place in the hide um, and watch it calling and ruffling its feathers. During its display, it creeps up and down its display pole. Um, and when a female finally comes in, it does some pretty amazing things with its, with its feathers. It's a real uh, one of these shape-shifting um, birds of paradise. And I think a female she'll be coming in soon. Here she comes. And it's just amazing to see these. You see her pecking at his feathers and then he starts to sort of puff out his, uh, his chest shield and chase her around. It was just amazing to watch. It was such a privilege. Um, okay, next we're going to go to another nearby patch of forest that has another big target of the tour um, called the Victoria Crown Pigeon. The day that we went had very heavy rainfall, so we were sort of sheltering under our umbrellas until it stopped and we could continue our search. Um, it was quite a hike. We were sort of having to cross little bridges and climb up slopes and um, yeah, it was really quite an adventure. And, but in the end, we found this amazing bird, another one of the crown pigeons. This is called the Victoria crown pigeon. Um, really one of the top birds in the world, in my opinion. We were ecstatic uh, when we found this bird. We were just so happy. Okay, from Nimbokrang, we're going to go across to some grasslands, uh, the Sentani grasslands. Um, the birding in the forest has been extremely tough. It was a relief to get out and do some easier birding. Um, this is a view from the ground. Um, one of the birds we're going to be looking for is the um, white-shouldered fairy wren. Um, we've looked for a couple of fairy wrens already. They're normally pretty hard to see, but this one's fairly easy. Um, it's also got some nice waxbill species like this crimson finch and this chestnut-breasted munia. And also these large uh, grand munias with these very uh, thick bills. Um, another bird that we'd heard several times before but um, saw for the first time was this lesser black kukul which showed really well um, and it was such a relief after such tough birding inside the forest. Um, but yeah, we've got a great view of it uh, doing its sort of um, hooting call there. Really wonderful bird. From Sentani, we're going to fly um, up um, to uh, Wamena in the Balliam Valley beneath the snow mountains for the um, last part of the main tour. We got some really nice views of this um, valley on the way in. Um, you can see the big um, plain here with mountains coming up on the side. This was a totally isolated area. They almost finished a, a new road going down but almost all access here was just by plane and they were just very uh, cut off from the rest of the world. They had lots of different uh, tribes in here that were very uh, were warring against each other so it, it's a real um, stronghold of, uh, of Papuan culture. Um, in the hotel that we stayed at they had a big thing that you could stick your head in and uh, pretend to be a, a Papuan warrior but uh, yeah very fierce warrior people and traditionally the men would sort of walk around almost naked with just a sort of gourd to sort of uh, maintain their modesty. 
first we're going to go up onto the sides of the Ballium Valley uh, where we're going to look for some birds here. One of the targets is the Ballium Whistler uh, and another one the Greater Lofarina. Um, some other birds that we saw were the, uh, the Papuan Marsh Harrier, recently split. Uh, another member of the Honey Eater family, the, um, the Red Collared Mizamella and the Red Capped um, Flower Pecker. Um, this is looking up at the snow mountains. Unfortunately, there were restrictions when we were there. So our um, ground agent had to find us an alternative birding location. But from the Ballium Valley, we sort of went up to the higher locations and got some nice um, mid elevation forest where we saw some nice birds. Um, this is actually the new road um, heading down to the coast, which is almost finished. Uh, some birds we saw there included Belfords, Melodectes, the Grey Street Honey Eater, Orange Eared Honey Eater, um, and some more members of uh, endemic families like this blue capped Ifrita. And um, this can also sometimes be found there, the, uh, the wattled plowbill. We're going to leave the Central Highlands and those joining the extension. We're going to fly to the island of Biak. Biak and the small island of Numfor um, are found in the Heelfink Bay um, and they have quite a lot of joint endemics and Biak has quite a few of its, uh, its own endemics. Um, so that's what we're going to be looking for on the extension. On the flight over there, um, it's just stunning views out of the window. We're going to start looking for some endemics close to town, uh, like this uh, Biak Whiteye, and this is the long-tailed starling. Next, we're going to go to the main birding site. There's like a forest track, goes through some very nice quality forest here, and this is where we can find most of the other endemics. Some of the birds we're looking for are the um, Biak Monarch, uh, the Biak Black Flycatcher, uh, the Biak Jerigony. There are quite a few localized subspecies, like this yellow-bibbed fruit dove. Biak was quite good for fruit doves. Um, they're often quite difficult to see in the lowland rainforest, but here we saw quite a few species very well, like this uh, superb fruit dove. Just getting ready to give uh, a little hoot here. There he goes. <laughs> Um, this is another localized subspecies, and um, this is a Biak form of coconut lorikeet. Um, there's a beautiful um, golden monarch here, the Biak golden monarch, um, the Biak northern fantail, and the Biak black browed triller, uh, many of which um, have got a good chance to be split in the future. Maybe we'll get an armchair tick. Our main target on the extension was a Biak paradise kingfisher, really stunning bird. I got a little bit of footage of this bird. You can see how it, um, it wags its tail from side to side. But yeah, really special bird and a, a wonderful way to finish the trip. On the last afternoon, um, we'd seen all the endemics. So we um, spent some time doing some snorkeling in the um, beautiful coral reefs there. And it's a wonderful wind down at the end of the trip. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you next time.